I could not express against my family and the other grown-ups in the Bronx the anger that I had buried because it was they were doing it for my own good, in quotes. And whether that was real or not, it was, it, it was a cover story I accepted. They weren't out to kill me. They weren't out to get me. Uh, they, were, uh, they, they, they were out there, and they may have been wrong, and I knew they were wrong, but they, would, they thought they were doing it for my own good, so how could I explode at them? How could, but the Army, for the first second I was in there, didn't give a crap about me. They made, rendered me anonymous. They gave me a number. Uh, they treated me like shit, which means like everybody else. You know, that I wasn't treated any, any, uh, any worse than anyone else. But um, they, uh, the army was, they made me feel as if I could finally express my rage because they weren't out for my best. They were out to make me a number, not a person. They weren't out to help me be a cartoonist. They were they, they were going out to help me be a body in a bag. And and um, so the rage that I concealed all those years suddenly blossomed, <laughs> full grown, and it was a blessing. And suddenly I could uh, write and write about the army and write increasingly angrily and and. So the story of Monroe, the first thing I did as a satire, which, happened, which I came up with sometime during my first year in the Army, came out of trying to turn my rage into a satirical form, uh, which in that kind of storytelling was generally unknown at the time. So I was finding a new form. I decided, again copying from Eisner, he would occasionally do spirit stories in the, in the form of a children's book. So I was going to do this children's book for grown-ups. And it would be about a four-year-old kid, me, being drafted by mistake and the Army refusing to admit its mistakes because the Army, like my parents, never admitted mistakes. Like Donald Trump. Like grown-ups. I mean, this was the age when grown-ups never admitted when they were wrong because that was a blow to... It was before Freud. It was, uh, uh, it was before parents always apologized to their children because they're wrong about everything. It, it, was, it was parents were always right, even when they knew they were wrong, because it was a matter of status and, and whatever it was, um, self-respect. So uh, the army opened me up to the anger that was a stranger to me, and started letting it out and letting it out, and it took another 40 years to get rid of it. <laughs> but it made a satirist out of it, me, and made a man out of me. It gave me the courage I never had before. Um, in the beginning, it took away my power of speech, so I stammered and stuttered. But then I, by the end of it, I was speaking, talking a blue streak. You know, I mean, basically, it, it that was I matriculated through the army and I went in as a freshman knowing nothing and I came out as a graduate student knowing everything about what I had to do with my life and I've been doing it ever since.